Marilyn. Hi, Marilyn. Welcome. I was just telling Bonnie, I don't know if you heard, but my family is in the other room next door to me playing Mario Kart. I can hear them. We were just playing a game called Overcooked, and it's like a cooking game where you, it's very, all teamwork where like you have to cook and serve meals and it's it's very fun till it's not and then we stop <laughs> hey Laura and Courtney all right <laughs> yes Bonnie's here too tonight okay I'm gonna pick it let's see what do we have tonight There's only six left see what's something easy I'm tired ermine stitch <laughs> yay <laughs> I got my wish all right ermine stitch is actually my favorite stitch or one of my favorites it used to be my absolute favorite stitch but now it's just one of my favorites so let's see <clears throat> all right I just do the little switcheroo Okay. All right. So, Ermine. Let's see. What do we have on ours? Um, let's see. On mine, I did, I followed the colors and I did this one. I did, um, I don't know if you can see that. My lighting is weird right there. Um, I did half this like um, dusty rose color and half the lavender. That was fun doing it like that. And then, um, Bonnie. Um, oh, she did this thing where you, ooh, yay, on the edge. All right. Um, so you can, um, you can define the line. So if you have a box that has two colors in it, you can define the line of one of the um, boxes, like one of the colors by doing um, ermine stitches all next to each other, following the line. So that's that's a nice uh, design choice right there. And then uh, here it looks like Bonnie did um, six strands for these and three strands for those. So again, like most stitches, you can choose however many you want. So <clears throat> let's see where we've got it on here. It's probably in the same spot. No, it's not. Oh yes, it is actually. It is in the same spot right there. All right, so um, I will demo it on here first. Um, there's two ways to do the ermine. The there's sort of like the traditional ermine. Hey, Maddie. Um, the traditional ermine is like this, kind of. And then the way that we usually do ermine is more like a snowflake, where all the um, lines are the same. So the traditional one is almost kind of like a fleur de lis, if you know what that is. Um, so let me see. Um, these can be like a little bit longer. But you don't have to draw it if you don't want to. You can stitch it. You can just stitch it. So I'm going to... Do, let's see, I've got orange and purple, so I'll demo with the pink. I'm demoing with the pink um, with the six strands. Okay. All right, so um, Poke and Paul is um, the way that we, so it doesn't really matter how, what order you stitch them in. Um, <clears throat> traditional is you start in the middle. Uh, so the way that Bonnie and I always teach it is we always teach it the same way and and we always stitch them the same way. And the reason for that is not the same way, but the same order. The reason for that is just so that if you're doing multiple ermines in one project that they all look consistent. Um, so, you know, there's no hard and fast rule, at least not in Bonaco world, um, that you have to, you know, stitch them in a certain order. But the way that we teach it is um, top to bottom left, top left to bottom right, top right to bottom left. So um, this is just how we do it. But, you know, like I said, you don't have to do it this way. So you're just, if you're doing the poke and pull, 
you're just going to follow your um, lines like that. Okay. Um, now you can uh, do the sewing method too. So let me show you that with this wonky one over here. It's not really my best drawing work, but okay. So for the sewing method, I'm going to do that first, or at least this is how I do it. I, I poke and pull the first one and then come up and then go across to the bottom, come up at the bottom left, go across to the bottom right, put your needle in, come back out in the top right. and then go back in at the bottom left, so like that. You could poke and pull the whole thing. That's just how I do it. But, you know, experiment and see what works for you. Like we always say, you just gotta do what works for you. So, all right, I'm gonna put my hoop on. I was just watching the sweetest thing. So my husband, I don't know if anybody heard um, from the, um, last live but my husband and I just got back from a trip and we went to Portugal um, which is our favorite place on earth um, we've this is, we've now gone three times and we just love it we have friends there we have family there it's you know it's very reasonably priced and the and we had credit um, on Tap Air, so we were able to fly over there for for um, using credit, um, which was actually free money because we had credit from going there before. And when our trip was canceled because of the pandemic, they asked us um, not to get our money back, and if and if we didn't get our money back then they would give us 20% on what we had already spent. So we basically flew to Portugal this time for free. And um, we just love everything about Portugal so far. And I was just watching this really lovely thing that my brother-in-law sent of a Ukrainian player who, um, so one of, there's two major soccer teams in Portugal, Benfica and Sporting Lisbon. And um, one of the Benfica subs came on and he um, was from the Ukra from Ukraine. He was Ukrainian. And the whole, um, it was so beautiful. The whole uh, stadium just lit up in this really beautiful applause. And they had, um, they had Ukrainian flag signs. It was really, really beautiful. I thought that was that was kind of brought some tears to my eyes watching that. I just feel so bad for everyone, Russian and Ukrainian people. It just it's really sad. So anyway, that was heart heartwarming to see that. So not my best or mine. So anyway, so I'm just gonna fill these in here. And come down like that. Yeah, that was really sweet. Okay. So Bonnie and I met today with our kids. We are um, teaching a class. I think I, we mentioned it before. We're teaching a class through our local Parks and Rec Department. And um, we met today to prep for that. Where did we go in Portugal? You missed it in the last live. Oh, yeah. Um, so we went to, um, Oksana just asked that. Uh, we flew into Lisbon and we actually spent half of our time there um, in Lisbon and half of our time in the Azores. So we flew to Lisbon. We were there for three days and then, um, and then we went to the Azores for three days and uh, uh, it's just wonderful. And it was really fun. We met um, some people there, um, some Americans actually. We just randomly met them when we were up at this little castle overlook sort of thing. And they've been traveling, the two of them, they're married and they've been traveling since June of last year. And they, um, you also love Portugal, especially Porto is so beautiful. I know. The first time we went to Portugal, we went to Porto and we loved it. Loved it, loved it, loved it. Um, 
so we met this couple and they have been traveling um, all over Europe. They've been to 22 countries since, um, since June of last year. And uh, so it was really fun to connect with them. We actually had a lot in common with them. They, they live in California. We used to live in California and just lots in common. It was really fun to meet up with them. But I was thinking about that, like, that's a long time to be away. But what a wonderful experience it's been for them. And they even brought their dog with them. Um, sadly, he passed away on the trip. Um, he had cancer. He was diagnosed with cancer on the trip and, um, and, and passed away within days, actually, of his diagnosis. But they got to spend six months of their trip there with him, which was really wonderful. So, <laughs> hi, Skooks. Yeah, Skooks just joined us. Wow, we have a good a number to good number tonight. Thanks for coming, everybody. <laughs> so I would love to do that. I think I would love to do that, travel for that long. So we met them on the tail end of their trip. They're going home next week. And they'll be the first time they're home since June. So it's pretty crazy. And they had avoided getting COVID the entire trip. They didn't get it until uh, after they flew to the Azores. <laughs> They got it on that. They think they got it on that flight. So I think I can do a tiny little ermine down here. <laughs> so I hope everybody's doing well tonight. I was <laughs> I was telling body before I just I um I went with one of my sewing students. We went to the fabric store today and bought some fabric for a, a dress that she wants to make for the sweetheart dance at her school. And, um, and I was like, Oh, I don't, I don't really want to sew a whole dress with her. We don't have a lot of time before the party. So I was really hoping, Oh yeah. Ermine stitch. Sorry, Skooks. Yep. We're doing the ermine. Um, I did not want to sew a whole dress. So I thought, Ooh, maybe I can get her to get a skirt. So we got a skirt pattern and she's going to buy like a, she's got this gorgeous, long circle skirt she's gonna get a crinoline to put underneath it she wants it big and poofy <laughs> so gonna be a full skirt with a crinoline underneath it's gonna be amazing so and then she's gonna get like a little um yes they do look like asterisks we are making asterisks <laughs> yep although the traditional looks a little bit more like a fleur de -lis. i don't know if you can tell here but this traditional one has like a longer center and then two lower placed X, the X is like placed lower on that center one. But I usually do the, I usually do the, uh, the snowflake kind. I don't know if you guys can hear, hear my son. The top wings are a little longer. Yeah. Well, they're like, I don't know if they're longer, but they're lower. They're kind of done lower. So you can do it either way. Um, if you missed my, um, what I said in the beginning, you can make them all the same, um, or you can do them a little bit lower. So yes, gone with the wind vibes. Yeah, I know nothing like adding a crinoline to a full skirt, right? <laughs> That's going to be great. I'm, I can't wait to see. I just can't wait to see it. It's going to be, and the fabric, oh my gosh, you guys, it's amazing. It's, um, it's like this iridescent. Oh, it's so hard to describe, but it's, it's it's iridescent and sparkly, and in at one angle it's navy, and the other angle it's pink, like a magenta. But it also has like silver through it too. It's it's just like hard to describe. But we, the, I went with her and her mom and we just took one look at it and we all like looked at each other. We're like, oh, this is it. This is the winner right here. <laughs> and uh, it's going to be so great. It's going to be a heavy skirt, I think, unfortunately. So I have to make sure it fits her really well. But And then she got a lining material underneath and the lining is magenta. <laughs> oh my gosh, this girl's style is just so rad. I love it. She's so cool. So... I'll have to, I'll post a picture of it when she's done. <laughs> You'll have to look on my, um, 
on my other account, which is Eliza B's BG. If you if you go over there, you can see you can actually see my sewing student. She's she's well, one of them is on there. She's got great style. Yeah, super fancy, Bonnie. Super super fancy. I can't wait to see it all finished. Her mom was a little shocked at the cost of the fabric, <laughs> but luckily we had a fifty percent off coupon, so that helped. And her mom is a is a military veteran, so she was able to use her military discount. So that was good. So yeah, it's gonna look great on her. She's the kind of kid where like, <laughs> like we made a shirt, and I said, "Do you want to do? Do you want to do regular sleeves, or do you want to do bishop sleeves?" Which I don't know if you guys know what bishop sleeves are, but they're like the 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 fabric down here is like super big and so it's gathered right at the wrist so it like kind of puffs out she's like yeah I want the bishop sleeve I'm like all right you go girl she just dives right in she wants she wants like she's like a maximalist I love it <laughs> oops I'm doing this one backwards I think she and uh, Bonnie I think she and Fernanda would get along great <laughs> Fernanda if you're uh watching this I think you and my sewing student are are, are uh are meant to be. <laughs> so that'll be fun. It's fun when you're buying fabric with someone else's money. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so tomorrow is our kids you know, back to school, and it's a little bit of a big day around here. Masks are optional starting tomorrow. So that's, uh, Bonnie's laughing at my comment, I think, about spending someone else's money. <laughs> yeah. So tomorrow is first mask optional day here in Connecticut, or at least in Fairfield. So uh, my daughter has decided she's going to wear her mask this week because she has, uh, she plays the cello and she has her winter concert coming up on Saturday and she does not want to risk anything. I just said puffy shirt to my husband, <laughs> puffy shirt. <laughs> so my daughter does not want to risk anything. So she said, I'm wearing my mask this week. I don't want to miss out on the concert. So I'm, I had to convince my kid all weekend that it will be okay without a mask tomorrow. We'll see if he takes it off. Yeah. Right. My daughter said that most of her friends have said that they are going to keep their masks on. So it's, it's interesting. I think after two years of wearing them, I'm sure they feel kind of weird without them. Some, they probably have some security. Um, my daughter said that some of her friends want to wear it because they like people not seeing their mouths. Um, maybe they have braces or they're self-conscious for some reason. So, uh, yep, we'll see. We'll see what happens. That's a big day around here. All right, I'm heading to my last one, you guys. Thanks so much for joining me. I hope you're having a cozy Sunday evening. I know Sunday evenings can be stressful for people, so hopefully it's not today for you. I just wrote a piece for my other job about a kind of self-care called self-care by subtraction, which we were just talking about. You made cupcakes. Nice. Maddie says she made cupcakes. <laughs> Um, so anyway, self-care by subtraction is removing the things from our lives that are not serving us, right? So hopefully you were able to subtract some things from your life today and just enjoy, enjoy a cozy Saturday, cozy Sunday. <laughs> okay, there we go. Yay, the happy little ermine. I love it. I just love it. It kind of reminds me of Bob Ross. But little, happy little ermines. Okay. That's it, everybody. Hope you have a great night. And thank you so much for joining us, as always. We're, I can't believe we're coming up on the end of this. We're going to miss it. Okay. Oh, your anniversary is tomorrow. Oh, your leap day. You got married on leap day. <laughs> That's so cool. It's my best friend's birthday tomorrow. So that'll be nice. Reach out to her. 
All right. Good night, everybody. Enjoy the evening. See you tomorrow.